Everyone wants success, but is it for everyone? Experts will tell you that anyone can be successful at anything they want only if they put their mind to it. But is that how success works? Is it really that simple? Not exactly. If anything, success comes at a cost. Most people never become successful because they're not willing to pay the price of success. It's a choice they have to make when they have to step out of the box, make some changes to their existing lifestyle, drop old habits and pick up new ones, and invest effort, attitude, and morale to keep things going. But if you're willing to learn and transform yourself in all the right areas, then success is definitely for you. So to find out how you can do that, let's get started. In this video, we'll talk about setting big goals. If you're going to set yourself up for success in life, then you need to set some mighty meaningful goals for yourself. So as a starting point, the first and foremost thing to remember on the journey of personal success is a positive attitude towards everything. If you fail once, brush up your knees and get back out there. If you get rejected the first time, better yourself with a positive outlook. Prove yourself instead of bringing yourself down with negativity. Tell yourself through every obstacle and hardship, I did not come this far to only come this far. No success is achieved overnight. No mountain is climbed without a few falls or two. If others can put up a fight to achieve personal success despite countless hardships, so can you. Better to aim high and miss than to aim low and achieve. It's always better to aim high, even if you don't succeed at first. When you aim big, you dream big and tell yourself that you stand a chance against all odds. The problem with setting lower standards is that the lower you set your aim, the more you confine yourself. You miss more chances and more of your abilities are left unknown. Likewise, more of your will goes without a test. Where you could achieve the stars, your low aim of never going that high will hold you back. No matter how many people look down on you and doubt your capability, it's your own personal belief, unwavering resilience, and ambitions that lead you to achieving your ultimate dream. But the moment you start to doubt yourself, the moment you decide you can't aim higher for the fear of failure is when your downfall begins. With a higher aim, you may miss it first or you may make it on your first try. Take your chances. A leap of faith in yourself. The higher you aim, the more you achieve. Even if you fall short of your goal, you won't end up too far from it. Just think of achieving a good score on a test. If you aim low at getting 50% mark on your test, you might be successful and achieve that. But that's all it will be. An average and low achievement. If you aim higher at getting 90%, you may miss and hit an 80, which is still higher and so much better than the low set aim of a 50%. The same goes for all tests and trials life puts you through. Set purpose-driven goals. When setting goals, you need to think about how to achieve them, what you need to do to achieve them, and how much time you need to get there. But the real driving force that'll actually make you sweat for any goal is why you need to achieve that goal. Why is it a priority? Why is it so important? Setting goals is easy. Just think of drawing up a New Year's resolution. Everyone does that every year and has been doing it forever, so much so that it's become a mere habit and nothing much else. But what people don't do is pause to think over the goal and question why. Inevitably, without this driving force, they'll soon forget all about it. As such, it's important to not merely set goals, but set purpose-driven goals instead. For example, you may well be thinking of hitting the gym, working out, and getting yourself in shape. With just this in mind, you set a goal in your New Year's resolution to work out every day. So you do it the first day and the second, and then something comes up on the third. Then you end up skipping the fourth day because you get lazy and there goes your fitness. There goes the goal. On the other hand, an obese person on the verge of getting diabetes and a possible heart attack is told by a doctor he needs to work out and lose weight really soon if he still wants a chance at a healthy life or maybe just life. This is his 
why. This is why he won't skip the third or fourth day, no matter what comes up. This is why he will achieve his goal with more determination. So through every hardship on your way, when you are at the brink of giving up, you can tell yourself again and again why you cannot give up, why you must go on. Give yourself a time frame to work with. Without setting a time frame to achieve any particular goal, there will be no sense of urgency. The importance of getting anything done is great, but the importance of getting it done in time is even greater. Giving yourself a duration for a specific task will make you more productive in that short time than you would be without it. If you know the deadline for a task is 24 hours, you'll make yourself attend to that task as a priority. You'll utilize those 24 hours in the most effective way possible to complete the task on hand. If you set a deadline of one week for the same task, not only will you waste the entire week and be less productive, you will also waste precious time that you could have used to complete other tasks as well. Having said that, the time frame has to be realistic and attainable. You need to be sure whether the goal is a short-term goal or a long-term one. Losing 10 kilograms in three days, not possible, not attainable, even if you spend most of the hours of the three days in the gym. The time frame should not be based on some delusion. An understanding of the goal, the priority you're willing to give it, can help you decide better how much time you need to give it and how much time is sensible to give to it. If you have an essay due next week and you keep delaying it or doing it in bits, paragraph to paragraph a day, it'll get tiresome and boring. In the end, it might not even make a lot of sense. Plus, you'll lose the sense of urgency that would make you more productive. But if you decide to do it in two days, you'll utilize those two days much more effectively and will even have time for other goals once you finish with that essay. The less you linger on with the task at hand, the better. In this video, we'll discuss about making real decisions. Everyone has to make decisions in their daily life. While some of them are small, others are big and have a profound impact on your life. So it's very important to evaluate all aspects of an issue before coming to a decision. There are a few things that, if considered, can help you make good decisions that you won't regret later in life. Make smart decisions. Most people don't realize the importance little decisions have in life. When you make a decision, it initiates events in your life that unfold into either something good or bad, depending on whether your decision was smart or not. You must make smart decisions. It often happens that we make decisions based on what others think or how a certain thing is supposed to be. The people around you have a huge impact on your decision-making skills. Surround yourself with positive presence. There is no right way to make a smart decision. The process of making a smart decision varies from person to person. For some people, their gut plays a role in making the best decision. The first thought that they have is the best for them. If they overthink the issue, they end up blowing the problem out of proportion and making decisions that are unnecessary. But for others, thinking is an important part of decision making. They need to think about a problem and make sure they've got everything covered before they decide something. Whichever of the two you are, make sure you cover every aspect of the decision. If you make smart decisions, your life will be much better and easier. Most people suffer the consequences of decisions made poorly or in haste. Take your time and get to know the issues in depth. Once you are content with your decision, proceed to its application. Just don't rush into making a decision. If you decide to move into a new house, make sure you ask yourself whether it helps you. Will you be paying more rent? Is this house close to your workplace? Is it too big or small for you? When you make a smart decision, you have no regrets later. Think everything through when you decide to move into this place. Otherwise, you'll face with problems like transportation issues, extra expenditure on rent, and waste or lack of space. Carry out your decisions. People are always making decisions about the changes they want to bring in life, but often end up ignoring them. You must carry out your decision. If you have strong willpower and you're dedicated about something, you'll surely be able to carry it out. For example, if you decide to join a book club in your local library, push yourself to do it as soon as possible. 
When you delay something, the chances of it never happening increase. Go to the library the first chance you get and fill out the membership form. A very common example in this regard is of smokers. There are so many people out there who want to quit smoking. They've searched everything and they've planned everything out, but they fail to carry out their decision. If you keep postponing it, you'll never be able to achieve it. Why start tomorrow when you can do it today? You can quit smoking if you put your heart and mind into it. Just go cold turkey. There are so many others who have done it. Read the stories of people online or join a help group so that you have motivation you need. Interacting with people who have succeeded in carrying out their decisions will help you immensely. Don't give up if you fail the first time. Learn from the mistakes you make in the first attempt. Ask yourself, how can you succeed the next time? Remember that you can do it. Nothing or no one can stop you if you put your mind to something. Keep reminding yourself that this is a smart decision that you made and now you need to act on it. It's the first step that counts the most. Every day, you might tell yourself that you'll start tomorrow. Once you decide that you're going to do it today is when you succeed. Just take that first step and the road will lead on. Don't look back. It's not always easy to carry out your decisions. Sometimes you even start, but there are hurdles in the way. If you want to quit smoking, you might be peer pressured to derail from this decision. Or people around you could tell you that ah, one smoke a day doesn't do any harm. You need to remember why you started in the first place. Before you made this decision, you must have thought a lot about the health and social changes it'll bring in your life. Every time you feel like you are derailing from your path, remember why you started the journey in the first place. You might even have to cut off things and people in order to carry out your decisions. Cut out people from your life who pressure you into smoking. It might be hard at first, but you need to remember that these people are toxic for you. If someone's bringing negativity in your life, why keep them close? Why did you decide to volunteer at a shelter? Because it made you content and you wanted to spend your time doing something good. Don't let laziness or a lack of a proper schedule derail you from this decision. Don't let your laziness stop you from doing things that are good for you. Sometimes you make mistakes when you carry out a decision. Don't let that stop you from continuing. Make amends and carry on. So start making smart decisions and carry them out without stopping for anyone or anything. In this video, we'll discuss about consistency is key. Consistency is the magic ingredient for success, be it personal betterment, business, academics, or just the relationships with loved ones. Without consistency and the will to stay steadfast in what you're trying to achieve, there is no success. A child never learns to tie his shoelaces the very first try. He tries over and over again till he finally figures it out on the hundredth time. The important thing is not to do it once, but to do it over and over again. To never stop till you reach your goal. Be committed and persevere. Perseverance is to keep up your efforts in doing something no matter the difficulties and obstacles in the way. It is perseverance that helps you learn how to walk, then helps you study for an exam or makes you get up every single day and get on with your life. Just like solving a jigsaw puzzle, if the piece doesn't fit, try another one and then another one until it's completed. Similarly, all goals are left unachieved, all success unknown till one learns to stay committed and persevere. Push yourself to be patient and stay committed. Tell yourself why it's important that you stay steadfast. Remind yourself of why you must go on. Anyone can try once and give up, but only those who stay committed and persevere succeed in life. In being persistent towards achieving any goal in life, you learn from your failures. You learn what went wrong the first time. You learn how to defeat these obstacles rather than be defeated by them. Everything in life demands this commitment from a successful career to a healthy relationship. Without it, a medical student would give up the first time they failed to memorize the horrid details of a gruesome disease. Without it, a mother would wake up every single night to nurse her child the moment he or she lets out a cry. And to be honest, without it, wedding vows wouldn't mean much either. Have a routine for success. 
Having a routine is vital for success in general. Without proper division and allotment of time you give to a particular task every day, there's no way of achieving consistency. It should be such that your mind automatically rings a bell to remind you what you must be doing at that particular hour. For instance, think of your daily skin regimen before bed. To have a routine would mean having dinner on time, cleaning up the kitchen next, and then heading to the bedroom to follow up with your skincare routine. Without a routine, a change in the timing of one thing would lead to a change in the other. With a late dinner, you might end up too exhausted and miss out on your daily routine. We all know how that goes then. It's missing out one day, then the next, and so on. So, Everything does need a proper allocation of time. What time do you wake up? How long do you work out for? What time do you eat? How much time can you afford to give to your hobbies? Are you giving enough time to friends and family? All of this needs to be set in order to achieve success. Being consistent with a routine maximizes the benefits of all the hard work. In the long term, having a messed up routine will not only stand in your way of success, but also mess up other aspects of life as well. Create good habits. Being consistent leads to the development of good habits. Creating good habits ensures success in all areas of life. Doing something once in a while or when you get the time doesn't get you anywhere near achieving your aims and aspirations. Instead, the keys to achieving any goals you set for are consistency and making quick decisions. This decision to do something every day is, in other words, your habits. The first thing to keep in mind for creating good habits is to choose discipline and your priority over your moods. I'm not in the mood to study today. Might as well binge watch a series. I'm a bit upset to work out today. Skipping one day shouldn't hurt. We've all been there. We've all chosen the mood over consistency, which has eventually led to a failure in developing good habits. To help keep the good habits you create, it's a good idea to track your progress. This helps you know how beneficial the habit has been for you. The clearer you see the results, the stronger you will be to continue them. For example, if you have a goal set on your weight and how much you want to lose, keeping a record every week should help you see a clearer pattern of the good that is coming from your habit of exercise. When you see the actual figure on scale, you'll get more enthusiastic and positive about your workout and how it turns out for you. No results can be seen overnight. Nothing is achieved in one go. Achievements take long, persistent struggle. Success isn't out of reach. It's only difficult to reach. Through persistence, perseverance, and commitment, success can be guaranteed. Consistency leads to the development of good habits. Good habits leads to actions, and that gets all the work done. Once you get used to the struggle and of staying steadfast, no matter the difficulties, no failures can set you back. They only make you stronger and more ambitious than ever to reach your goals. In this video, we'll talk about nothing is impossible. Everyone says that nothing is impossible, but do they actually believe it? If you really want everything to be possible, you have to start believing it. You'd be surprised by the power that belief has in life. You can make everything possible if you condition your mind to think so. Condition your mind to think positive. Optimism is an essential part of success in life. Once you condition your mind to think well and good, it'll have a positive impact on all your decisions and thoughts. You might look at someone making art and think to yourself that it's possible for you to do that. Why do you have to think so? A better way to go about it is to tell yourself that you can do just as well as that other person. Having a positive outlook on life is the first step to achieving success. You will never become a brilliant photographer if you keep telling yourself that it is impossible for you to capture something beautiful. What do you need to do instead? You need to be positive and think positive. Keep telling yourself that you can do it. Pessimism will bring you down every time. It's okay to have doubts, but don't let your doubts get in the way of achieving success. Train your brain to have positive thoughts so that you can find a way out of these doubts. People like Michael Jordan and J.K. Rowling failed in their first attempts too. Did they give up? No. Instead, they kept their minds positive and kept striving. Now, one of them is the most celebrated player in basketball, while the other is creator of a world that every reader around the world loves. If they just told themselves that it's impossible for them to achieve something just because they failed the first time, would they have succeeded? Never. Attitude is the key to success. 
Your attitude matters a lot. If you're not serious about something, you can't expect to excel at it, can you? So you've made your mind about learning to play the piano. To actually learn, you have to stay determined. There's no going back once you've made up your mind. Keep reminding yourself that you are only stopping once you've made it possible. Don't be lazy about something. If you've joined a piano class for learning, go to it regularly. Don't miss a class just because you don't feel like going or you're too lazy to go. Tell yourself that missing even one day will put you behind. Here, it's very important to not listen to others. People like to share their experiences, especially if they've had a hard time of it. Someone might tell you that you'll never learn because they themselves didn't manage to. If someone failed at something, that doesn't mean you will too. Maybe they did not have the dedication or positive outlook. You, on the other hand, have the positivity and the determination and you will succeed. Most importantly, have faith in yourself. When you wake up every day, tell yourself that it's possible for you to do it. Remind yourself of all the challenges that you've already overcome and prepare for the ones you're going to face. Think of a school or college. Everyone goes to the same place and have the same teachers, books, and environment. So why is it that some of them manage to excel at studies while others don't? They must be doing something extra that others aren't. It's their attitude that takes them forward. They work extremely hard and they don't let anything stop them from getting what they want. This is what you need, so don't let anything distract you or derail you. Learn to take a blow. Life isn't all cotton candy and unicorns. If you start a journey, you're bound to face bumps along the road. You must be prepared for everything. Keep your disaster management plan ready so that you aren't totally thrown off by any problem you face. Sometimes one thing can ruin an entire day or week. Learn to look at the brighter picture. Think of all the positive things that happened in that day. A good way to do it is to keep a gratitude journal. Write in it about everything that you are grateful for. So every time you're hit with a failure or a hurdle, read the journal to feel better. Problems are there to teach you something. Every problem that you face along the way will help you polish your skills and nourish your personality. Don't lose hope just because one thing didn't go right. Learn from the mistakes you made and teach yourself how to do better next time. If you put your heart to a task, it can never be impossible. Always remember that there is no dead end. Sometimes when you are trying to do something, it might not be possible to do it with the first method. There are other ways to do that thing. If you have decided to read more often, don't be discouraged because books are too expensive. You can always go to a library or borrow books. Also, you can read books online or get PDFs easily. So don't treat your money issue as a dead end. Change your direction and reach your goal. A very popular quote teaches us that nothing is impossible because the word itself says that I'm possible. Keep this in mind every time you face a tragedy. It can be hard to stay positive if your environment's filled with negativity. Use positive words when you define your life or purpose. Spend time with people who will always push you forward and encourage you rather than telling you to give up after the first blow. When you've learned how to channel your inner energy and keep your mind positive, you realize that nothing is impossible indeed. As you may know, it's only impossible until it is done. So do it and make it possible. In this video, we'll learn how to be accountable. There comes a certain time in your life when you realize that now you are accountable for everything you do. The idea is quite daunting as accountability is needed in all spheres of life. In some situations, you have to be accountable for yourself alone, while in others, you're accountable for others as well. Take responsibility. The first step of being accountable is to take responsibility. Now, it might be a personal responsibility or one that affects others around you. For instance, if you're the head of a family, you have to be accountable to them too. Or if you're leading an excursion tour, you have to be accountable to your tour group. Remember this, with great power, comes great responsibility. So take full responsibility of your actions and don't make excuses if something goes wrong. You need to realize that you're in charge and it's only you who's accountable. So take the responsibility of your action and theirs too. It's easy to throw someone else under the bus for anything that goes wrong, but the mature thing to do is to take responsibility rather than make excuses. The tour didn't reach its destination on time. Are you going to blame someone from the group for not coming on time? Are you going to take responsibility for not making the instructions clear enough? The choice is up to you. 
always remember, it is mature to be accountable for yourself. It might not be the best feeling in the world at the time being, but you will feel much content later. Say it out loud that you'll do it. Positive affirmation is very important, so it's crucial to keep reminding yourself that you will do it. Sometimes you get sidetracked by events or people, but you mustn't let this be permanent. You're also accountable to yourself for your mission or goal in life. You have to determine what you want to do or achieve in life. Ask yourself what you're good at or what you like. Base your goals and long-term plans on your capabilities, desires, and strengths. Make a mission statement for yourself. Write it down somewhere so that you can read it every day. Many people have inspirational quotes on their walls or phone screen so that they look at them every day. In this way, they get inspired every day, even on ones that are not so good. But if you're someone with a knack for writing, write down your goals. Make sure to write it in a place where you can see it every day. If it stares you in the face, you can't run away from it. Or if you have supportive peers, get feedback from them. Ask them if you're doing things right or if you need to improve. This will help remind you that you need to do better. Also, it will give you an insight into how others perceive your efforts. If you're in a workplace, your subordinates can also tell you how well you're doing. If the feedback is positive, it'll motivate you to do even better and have a sense of accomplishment. And if the feedback's not positive, you can use it to improve performance as you're the one who will eventually be accountable. Either way, feedback can do wonders if only to hold yourself accountable. Be honest. Just as accountability is important, so is honesty. It's very important to be honest about the results. When you're working alone or in a team, you have to stay honest about the outcome of your efforts. Success only becomes possible when you own up to your mistakes. While they can be cumbersome, mistakes are also valuable learning opportunities. If you've done something wrong, own it. Ask yourself why it happened and what you can do to make it right. If you totally ignore it or lie about it to yourself and others, how can you ever hope to rectify it? Plus, when you're not honest with yourself, you'll always have a constant feeling of dissatisfaction. Your conscience won't let you forget it. So wouldn't it be better to just admit it? Also, be honest about the goals you set. Be realistic. Holding yourself accountable for your actions is also a reality check to set goals that are attainable. Realism is essential when setting goals. Say you want to save money for a car and you tell yourself that you will do it in a year's time. Now, you need to be real about it. Do you have enough income coming in every month that you can save some of it for buying a car? Are you ready to cut out some expenses so that you can save? Will you be able to manage it in a year or do you need more time? If you think your goals are realistic, proceed with them. Then, if you fail to buy a car in 12 months, don't make excuses or blame something else for it. Ask yourself why you weren't able to do it. Maybe you set the wrong time frame or misspent the money that you could have saved on unnecessary things. Be fully honest with yourself about the results of your personal quest or teamwork. A good way to prevent disappointment or unpleasant situations is to have a plan B so that you can fix things later. Being accountable can be a frightening thought because no one likes to be judged, especially for something that someone else did. But if you follow the right strategy and put in the effort, you'll be able to master the art of accountability. In this video, we'll talk about live in the moment. Living in the moment means to be fully aware and mindful of the present moment. It may involve some effort on your part as it means not dwelling unnecessarily on the past or being overly anxious about the future. To live in the moment is to seize the moment you are in, living it to the fullest, experiencing it without letting the past or the future distract you. In fact, living in the moment means acknowledging that someday will never come. If anything, it's already here. It's right now. So don't put off your goals just because it's not the right time or you don't have the funds. You can still work for your goals despite these setbacks. The time may never be right unless you're prepared for it. So prepare right now. This presents the entire idea of living in the now and not just living it, but realizing the importance of it.
giving it the emotions and thought that it rightfully demands, focusing on what you have now, focusing on the task at hand, and focusing on all that you can thank today for. Be present and mindful. Being present in the now and being mindful of the very moment you're living in allows you to make it even more valuable and meaningful. Instead of pondering over the past or worrying over the future, make the most out of the present. If your goal is to spend more quality time with your family, then do so. Say you're in a family gathering, but instead of giving family the attention they deserve in the moment, your eyes are glued to the phone screen, your ear not paying attention to what the person sitting next to you is saying. You nod your head every once in a while without paying attention to what's been said at all. Even if the phone is put aside, the mind still remains occupied with it. The precious few hours you finally spare for the family time all go to waste, and you have no clue when you'll be able to spare some time for them again. Instead, seize the moment, live it, and be mindful of it. Make the most out of opportunity at hand, not letting distractions take away what you have now. Feel the moment and embrace it. Unless you learn to be present and mindful of the moment, you won't be able to give it all your best. A first date, a late night call with your best friend, a walk with your dad. We do it all, but we don't give it our all. We're incomplete when all these moments slip through our fingers. Just because we were too busy being in so many places, states, and moments in time to be actually present, we were too distracted to be present in the moment as a whole. Meditate. If you find yourself caving into distractions easily, consider meditation. Meditation can be very helpful in learning how to live in the moment. It's a practice that helps find inner peace and acceptance, both of which are essential for being mindful of the present moment. It's also a great way to relax so that you're able to let go of all the stress, anxiety, and thoughts of the past or future that haunt you. Unless you're truly relaxed, there is no living in the moment because the present gets overshadowed by the past or the future. Meditation techniques are preferably practiced in a serene, calm, natural environment. Think of times or places like early morning near a lake or in a field where there are no beeping phones, no honking cars, just the consistent melodic sound of water and the birds chirping. Meditation would require you to focus on these, slowly tugging away at all the thoughts that had occupied your mind. It teaches you to live that very moment to the fullest, to be able to sense and appreciate it fully. Even breathing during meditation has a significant effect. Deep and relaxing breaths help you feel like you are taking in positive energy and getting rid of negativity burdening your mind. With a couple of deep breaths, you can feel the relaxation and peace take you over, so you're able to enjoy these moments of peaceful solitude. Making a daily habit of meditation will help you stay calm and focused on the present moments throughout the day. Practice gratitude. Gratitude and living in the moment go hand in hand. Without living in the moment, you can't be grateful for the little things that make life worth living. A witty answer, a hilarious joke, that first bite of a delicious steak, the patter of rain against your window, the giggle of your child when he sees you. If you're not mentally present and mindful of these little things that make every moment of life precious, you can never be grateful. How can you know the worth and value of these things if you're too lost in the past or worries of the future to live such moments? When you live in the now, you experience each moment completely and you learn to appreciate it. Be happy with what you have now, with the contentment that where you are, who you are with, what you are doing is everything. The realization that what is in your hands right now is the best without thinking, hey, it would be better if, or this is good, but learn to be grateful of what you have without any ifs or buts. Don't waste away what you have by thinking of something you once had and lost or by wishing of something you may never have. Be grateful of what your now comprises of. Constantly letting the past distract you keeps you tied to it, keeps you from making the most of the present, and constantly thinking of the future, of what could be, what could have been. All of these thoughts do not change what has happened and can't help you decide what happens in the future. What has already been and what will be are not in your control. But it is in your control to live in the moment, to enjoy the present, to live every moment in a way that makes it count. 
Measuring your success by what you have now is so much more than imagining what could have been or could be. In this video, we'll discuss about being adventurous. Being adventurous is to experience something different from the usual, something exciting and maybe even risky. For every individual, the word adventure means different things. For some, it may just be staying up late and out past the curfew. For others, it could be skydiving. Everyone finds different things to be exciting and adventurous. Whatever it means to you as an individual, everyone should feel it often enough to make memories and to make life worth the while. Without adventure, the daily grind of life slowly strips away excitement and experiences that are important for the growth of a person. Adventures contribute in keeping relationships from getting boring. They contribute in letting you keep our personality from becoming dull. Step out of your comfort zone. Your comfort zone can be a very small, confined space. In this small space, all things are familiar to you. There are no new experiences here, no new lessons to learn, and no challenges. Stepping out of your comfort zone means trying new things that you're not comfortable or familiar with. Try doing things that you haven't done before or never thought you'd ever do. Push yourself to get new experiences, to get some excitement in life. Confining yourself to the comfort zone will never allow you to grow as a person. Instead, it'll make you that person in a gathering who has no stories to tell. It'll make you that person no one invites to hang out anymore because you're not open to trying new things. And not to mention that it'll definitely stand in the way of achieving any success. It does not mean that you need to transform everything about you overnight. Rather, it is something you need to do for yourself once in a while. You can never enjoy doing the same things over and over. A little adrenaline rush never did any harm. Without stepping out of your comfort zone and being adventurous, you'll one day look back at life and see nothing but a plateau. Adventures and things we do for excitement are the highs in life. The best and most joyful moments can never be experienced in that small confined space we call comfort zone. The fear of unknown and unfamiliar can make it hard to do so, but once you learn to take little steps out of the comfort zone, you realize how the benefits far exceed the fears. And only after this will you be able to take big leaps out of the comfort zone and be adventurous. It'll help you learn more about yourself, about your strengths and weaknesses. Be open-minded and learn from experiences. To enrich life with adventures, it's important to be open-minded and to learn from experiences. To be open-minded is to accept that there are things you don't know about and also things that you could be wrong about. It means to be open to the idea of changing your thoughts, opinions, and perceptions from new experiences and being open to new challenges and ideas. For example, a narrow-minded person will always respond with a no when asked to join in anything exciting. A pessimist would not only refuse, but also go on to explain all the things that could possibly go wrong. An open-minded person, on the other hand, would be open to not only hearing about new ideas, but also trying out something new and adventurous. It's the same as one ordering the same thing from the menu every time compared to the one trying out new items and cuisines. The latter will have far better experiences, some good and some bad. Every time you experience something new, there's something to be learned from that experience. Just as a traveler learns about the hospitality of people in a particular place, the different foods to try out there, or the problems to be wary of. On the contrary, someone who is too afraid to invest so much time, energy, and money on traveling and getting out of the comforts of home will learn nothing new from living each day exactly the same as the previous. Prioritizing adventure over convenience and safety. However, this does not mean you risk your safety and security for adventure. It doesn't mean putting your life or the life of others at stake. What it means instead is that you need to let yourself out of the shell that makes you feel safe and at ease. To prioritize adventure over convenience would mean that you're willing to go that extra mile to bring some excitement to your life. It's similar to what happens to a child with overly protective parents, one who isn't allowed to be friends with someone the parents have not approved of, not allowed to swing faster, not allowed to eat sweets, kept on tightly controlled schedules, and so on. 
Compare him to a child whose parents are willing to let their child try new things, make new friends, and learn from his own experiences. The personalities of these two will be totally opposite. The former will always play by the rules, never learn to be independent, and never have the self-confidence to step out for an adventure. But the latter would know well that life is all about taking chances and learning from the outcomes, enjoying life through the adventure of it all. When you compare the two, growth and success are almost always contrasted with comfort and safety, whereas growth leads to learning, creating, doing, resisting, and failing. Comfort leads to stability, pleasure, protection, and feeling good. But growth can't happen if you choose comfort over learning. And success demands growing, overcoming obstacles, maybe even failing, but then getting up and trying again. So you can't continue to keep clinging to the easy and avoiding what's challenging if you want to be successful at anything. In this video, we'll discuss about words of success. Words and languages are unique to human beings only. They're like a superpower which you can either use for the good or the bad. Unfortunately, people don't often realize the impacts words can have, whether it's the expression of love, the instructions on a manual, or the speech of a captain just before a game. The words we use can change the outlook on everything. In fact, words probably linger longer in our memories than actual faces or whole events, so it's wise not to underestimate what words can do for yourself and for others. Beliefs are shaped from the words you use. Has someone ever passed a remark that makes you insecure till date? Things like, you have a funny smile, you have a big nose, you have really bad breath, leaving you with that insecurity for life. So that you now always smile with a hand over your mouth or get nervous speaking to someone too close to your face. That's how words mold your beliefs. That's how words from others change what you think of yourselves. The same goes for compliments. It's surprising how a few words of appreciation can make you believe more in yourself. A simple, this color looks so good on you will subconsciously always make you look for that color. Or words of appreciation from a teacher or mentor will encourage you to work harder and improve. This is exactly how words factor into success and failure. A common example of this is what you hear from a doctor. Be it a serious disease or an aesthetic related problem, you hang on to every word that doctor tells you. Not only the patient himself, but everyone related to him believe in the doctor's words religiously. If the doctor speaks kindly and reassures the patient time and again that he will be cured, that this treatment is the best one, the patient will start feeling relaxed and better right away. If the doctor doesn't give any such reassurance and just hands over a prescription, the patient will stay restless and unsure about his treatment. Mind your vocabulary. The words you use can pave your way to success or downfall. Come to think of it, speakers make a living out of it. Be it a religious speaker, a motivational speaker, or a teacher, they all use their vocabulary to their best in order to convey things better to you, in order to improve your understanding of a concept and leave an impact on you. When sitting through a job interview, you're basically being assessed on how you speak. The qualifications are all there on the resume, but the ability to communicate only comes through words. A candidate who sounds more convincing and capable has a higher chance of securing the job, even if others are more qualified. The right words are not only more convincing, but will also be an indicator of how well-read you are. For students, vocabulary can make a huge difference. Without the right choice of words, it's very likely that they will fail to express how good their concepts are and might not do so well on a test. So mind your vocabulary as it can shape the level of your success. Even in relationships, vocabulary can save you or in the other case, get you into trouble. With the right words, you can be more expressive of your feelings, good or bad, so that the other person knows exactly how you feel. It keeps things from getting boring and monotonous. Say your spouse wants to know how they look every time they dress up for you. Do not just stick with beautiful every time. Use other expressions to tell them how you feel, to boost their confidence, and encourage them to put in that extra effort for you next time as well. And more importantly, so that it's believable. Otherwise, they'll just think your words don't carry meaning at all. Use more I can rather than I can't. These are words that are entirely related to you. They can make you test your abilities or they can make you give up. 
Read a new recipe that seems yummy but too complicated? Was her answer, I can't do this. Did you just tell yourself that without even trying? Can you ever hope to succeed at something if you don't even try? The more you use this phrase, the more opportunities of success you'll miss out on. The ratio of how often you use I can or I can't can bring much more success and positivity in your life. I can will symbolize all the risks you're willing to take, all the new things you're willing to try, all the chances you take, the faith you have in yourself, the limits that you establish for yourself, and how much you're willing to push yourself to achieve what you want. I can't, on the other hand, symbolizes the exact opposite. It's all the chances you missed, the times you refused to see if you could push past an obstacle, the opportunities that you didn't let yourself avail, and basically failure without even a single try. Try making your choice of words positive using I can so that you can reprogram your subconscious mind to believe things about yourself, your potential, and your aspirations. Because what you believe about yourself can have a real impact on the outcomes of events. It's in your own control which of these words you use for yourself. In this video, we'll talk about being a lifelong learner. Learning is not limited to how many school and college years you've had. Instead, it's a constant, ongoing process of evolution, one that involves acknowledging that you don't know everything. It's an important factor in shaping your personality, introducing new concepts and ideas to you, and helping you educate yourself without any limitations. If anything, the worst thing you could do to yourself is insist that you already know everything. But choosing to evolve isn't always easy. Evolving means mastering success by continuously becoming a better version of your current self. It also implies that you be humble enough to accept correction and improvement. Embrace learning and constant improvement. In order to become the best version of yourself, you need to implement this rule in your life. For this, you need to accept the fact that no information you have is already complete and there could be more to know about it. Be open to more knowledge and facts instead of being rigid and deciding that what you already know is final and enough. Say you hear about a new research paper on one of the subjects you had while graduating. Not being open to constant improvements and knowledge would make you think, I don't need to waste any time reading this. On the other hand, your approach to it could be as a lifelong learner, in which case you'll constantly struggle to further improve your learning and educate yourself. Also, it's only at school that parents or teachers push you to study and learn whatever's in the curriculum. After that, you're on your own, and learning becomes a self-motivated task. It's a personal choice you make every day that doesn't necessarily imply to studies alone. Instead, it implies to the overall education you have. You could learn from a documentary that is completely unrelated to your career. You could learn how to milk cows from a relative who owns a farm. Or you could learn how to make jam from your grandmother. The point is just to learn from anywhere about anything. Never stopping learning. There are so many reasons why you should never stop learning and not one logical reason why you shouldn't. The struggle and desire to learn all your life can shape your personality for the better. Everyone knows that one person in their circle who's just so charismatic and interesting to talk to. Someone who genuinely has something to contribute to conversations instead of mere opinions. Someone who has knowledge and stories to share with everybody. Such are lifelong learners. When someone decides to never stop learning, they also decide to be more independent, useful, and hence successful. Learning also makes you more influential. It makes people consider your opinion and take whatever you say seriously because they know it comes from deep knowledge and is based on facts rather than intuition. If anything, learning is the minimum requirement for success in any field or life in general. You need to keep increasing your knowledge to keep up with everything that's going on. If it's a specific field where you need to succeed, then you need to engage in some maintenance learning. This keeps you on track and keeps you from falling behind. If you need to groom yourself further, you need to get into some growth learning. This type of learning expands the mind by teaching you skills you didn't have before. And finally, there's something called shock learning, which contradicts something that you knew before. For the most part, this can potentially be the most beneficial type of learning as you first have to unlearn something that you knew before. 
then you have to relearn the new information, which gives you new insight into an old situation. Unfortunately, most people choose to ignore this in favor of the old information and sabotage their own success. You need to be never afraid of change. What stops you from becoming a lifelong learner? And the reason why most people fail to have this approach is because of themselves. After being done with a subject, most students never go back to the library to open up a new book about the same subject. Same is the case with all other situations in our lives. We are not open to learning. If someone tries to get our facts right, we end up getting in an argument because we're too stubborn to admit that we could be wrong and the other person is actually doing us a favor. It's important to remember that the one thing that you're most sure of in life is time. It can be a huge barrier to lifelong learning. In order to be a lifelong learner, you need to change your mindset and concepts about it. You need to make learning a priority. There are no rules, no boundaries. You need to embrace this journey and learn about anything from anyone or anywhere. It's not about pouring yourself into books. It's about things you learn every day from those around you. It's not confined to the walls of a lecture hall. Live as if you were going to die tomorrow. Learn as if you were to live forever. Mahatma Gandhi. Great thinkers, leaders, and influencers all had many things in common. Lifelong learning is one of them. In order to achieve personal success and also to be more valuable and useful to those around you, be a lifelong learner. Don't confine your learning to years or places. Don't confine to learn just from books. Anyone and any event can teach you important things as long as you set your mind to it. Have a strong desire, almost a hunger for knowledge. Without real passion towards learning, it'll be like a burden you bear in school years, not education. In this video, we'll talk about there's no such things as failure. In life, you are bound to go through some ups and downs. A strong person is one who manages to pull through anything and everything. To be strong and win at life, it's important to remember that there's no such thing as failure. Don't be afraid of rejection. The idea of failure is different for everyone. For some people, the idea is quite daunting, while for others, it's just downright depressing and discouraging. Failure comes in different forms and through different means. Sometimes it's disguised as your inability to excel at something. At others, it comes as rejection. Rejections can be a huge blow if you're not prepared for it. You must always be prepared for rejection because it will come your way at some point in time. Don't be afraid of it and don't refuse to accept that it has come your way. Instead, accept it and polish yourself to be better. If you've been rejected from a college or a co-curricular program, ask yourself why it went wrong. Instead of being afraid of the idea, embrace it and use it to make yourself better. Everyone develops a fear of failure as they grow older. It's easy to see because young people have less fear of failure than older ones. As an infant, you learned how to walk through failure. You tried to get up, but you fell down. But did you stop trying altogether? No. You went through the whole process of trial and error to learn how to walk perfectly. The same principle applies to your adult life. Sometimes rejection hurts your self-esteem, but if you think of it as feedback rather than a failure, wouldn't things be much better? Treat your rejection as feedback and find ways to enhance yourself. Most importantly, don't let the fear of rejection stop you from trying at all. At least give something one or two attempts, if not more. With the right amount of dedication, you will be able to achieve whatever you want. Failures are stepping stones for success. It's quite a paradox that you have to fail in order to succeed, yet it makes a lot of sense. If you fail at something, that doesn't make you a failure. It just makes you a person who's learned something from their attempt. A world-renowned example of this is Thomas Edison performing about 10,000 experiments to come up with the perfect model for a light bulb. What kept him going after his first or hundredth try failed? The determination to succeed. He didn't treat the futile experiments as failures. Instead, he treated them as 10,000 new things that he learned. There are many examples from history which show that failure is essential in the journey to success. You can't really expect to learn something if your path is obstacle-free, can you? 
But when you fail, you see your mistakes, and that gives you a chance to refine yourself. This is why all successful people are so refined in their ways and choices. They've learned from failures in life. Michael Jordan, the famous basketball star, admits that he's only successful because he failed over and over again. You might think that failure would only break your hopes and dim the lights along the road, yet this isn't entirely true. It just depends on how you decide to see something. As a first-time parent, you might think that you're failing every time something goes wrong. Think of it this way. Every time you do something wrong, there's something you learn not to do in the future. With time, you get better and parenting becomes much easier with your second child. As long as you learn from the experience, it's a success. Failure is an amazing experience in its own way. When you fail, you learn new things about yourself. You learn a new way to cope with something and you discover your capabilities that never surfaced before. Just like that, you also learn new things about the task at hand. It's perhaps not possible to learn as much from success because it comes with perfection. But there's so much that you can learn from failure as it gives you a chance to grow as a person. You only fail if you give up. As long as you keep trying, you're not failing. If your own failures seem overwhelming, then learn from the experience of successful people. They have a habit of never giving up. Instead of gloating over their failures, they use them to their advantage and pave their way to success. They've all taught us that it's okay to fall and that there's no shame in that. Make this fall your strength and get up with more determination and force that is unbeatable. Always remember, your failure isn't a stop sign. It might be a sign for you to change your direction or be more focused on the one you're already heading to, but in no way is it a stop sign. If you stop, that's when you fail. As long as you keep going on and becoming better, you're succeeding. Never let others force you into believing that you're a failure. It's your journey, and you know how far you have come. You just need to learn from every experience, and it'll soon lead you to success. Everyone faces setbacks in life, but it's people who experiment and persist that become successful later in life. You might have failed multiple times to keep your blog or website running. If you learn from each failure and rectify every mistake you made, you'll have your passion fulfilled in no time. It's only you who determines that you have failed, not your circumstances, neither the people around you. Not everyone gets to play easy in life. Hurdles are bound to come your way. But remember what Tony Robbins says. There's no such thing as failure. There are only results. In the end, the formula to achieving success isn't all that complicated. It's within your grasp once you've decided to go after it with everything you've got. By following these principles that help you solve problems, overcome frustrations, develop patience, boost self-esteem, and improve yourself as a person, you can be sure that you will be successful in improving the overall quality of life. Hey there again. First, I'd like to thank you for choosing Success Principles. You've just made one of the best investments to your own life and your future will thank you for it. You're now one step closer to unlocking the secrets behind your success and greatness. Also, I want to personally commend you for committing and taking massive action to secure your future, especially when it comes to making transformational changes and turning your vision into a reality. I'm certain you're going to love what you discover in Success Principles, but your order is not quite complete yet though so don't leave this page yet or you will lose out your one-time opportunity to uncover abundant wealth prosperity and a lifetime of happiness so before you go here's my special one-time offer for you don't worry this video presentation is a lot shorter this time what i'm about to show you will increase your likelihood of following through with the method and achieving so much more than you ever thought possible it's an amazing offer that will complement your new blueprint introducing success principles video upgrade to unearth all the secrets within the book you have to read through all the pages and i know that this process can be extremely tedious for many that said i'm pretty sure that more than 60 percent of the readers won't even last a single chapter that's the reason why so many didn't get the results they truly desired because they gave up halfway through the process and i don't want you to be one of them what if i can show you a way to shortcut the tiresome process would you be interested that's right i'm talking about cutting half the time you spend on reading and reaping 30 
to 40% more results. If you are, then you will love the video course of success principles. As you probably already know by now, videos are one of the most impactful ways to keep one engaged with your content. Think of this upgrade as a live workshop where I'll guide you by the hand and show you step by step as if I'm right beside you. You remember more from this video course than the blueprint because you have a voice that speaks to you, guides you, and grabs your attention with visual graphics. You digest everything easily from this course without any distractions or boredom. Did you know that we remember 50% more of the things we hear and see. This interactive form of visual receiving allows you to easily recall what you've learned and break the boundaries of what you might already know about a topic. These videos are designed and recorded by a professional voiceover actor for optimum results, meaning you get more profound results in less time. And I want you to see positive, real results when you put everything you've learned into practice. Inside this amazing video upgrade, you get 12 premium quality videos of success principles. Get ready to master the 10 success principles and unleash your full talents. All you need to do is sit back, relax, and push the play button and reap all the benefits. Here's a sneak peek of the topics in this upgrade. How to set big goals, making real decisions, consistency is key, nothing is impossible, key attitude for success, be accountable to yourself and others, live in the moment, how to be adventurous, secret words of success, Success, how to be a lifelong learner, how to bounce back from failure, and many more. So how much for this upgrade? I could easily charge you $1,997 for the above upgrade considering the amount of time and effort put into creating this fantastic course. However, I'm not going to charge you that much. As I mentioned before, I only want those who are truly committed to join this course and I know you are one of them, or else you wouldn't be reading this page. So I'm gonna give you a really special offer. You don't have to pay $1,000 to get this video course, not even $100. In this exclusive one-time offer, you get instant access to Success Principles video upgrade for just a fraction of your investment. And did I also mention that you get to try this out with zero risk? That's right. Your purchase of this video course is backed by my 100% ironclad guarantee for the next 30 days. If you're not completely satisfied, simply return your order within 30 days for a full refund. I'll see that your money is promptly refunded. You have my word on it. And just so you know, this offer is not made available to the public. I intend to keep this golden opportunity limited only to you and others who are committed in doing whatever it takes to achieve achieve success and greatness. Also, it's my way of saying thanks for choosing me, and I think you deserve to get this almost exclusively. So if you click away or close this page, you won't get to see it again after this. There you have it. Get everything you see on this page for a low one-time investment only. Click on the buy button now and get started today.